So you got the alleviation of traffic and congestion. Then you have an increase in the human lifespan because we're spending more time with our loved ones and our families and we're having more time to rest and rejuvenate because if you work remotely, I don't know about you, but when I'm at work, I get tired. When I get tired, I start falling asleep. Like I'm like, oh my God, I have to get up, walk around or do something to, to kind of wake up. I don't drink coffee. So it's like, what do you do? So I, like I said, I get up, walk around, talk to people, drink some water or something. I don't know, but nothing really seems to, sometimes I take like a car nap or something. Um, nothing really seems to help. So when you're working from home, you can take a nap at home, right? You have that ability to regulate your biological functions, right? Because it is a human biological function that we are in charge of. Right? We are in charge of when we go to the bathroom for ourselves, when we take rests and breaks like that. It's silly to think that we put, we're giving that power to somebody else when it's only something that affects the life that you're living. It's not going to affect that person if you're tired. Right? They're not tired. You're tired. You know, you're thirsty. They're not thirsty. So why would we make it up to them to determine when we can take a break, when we can have something to eat? If you're at home, you make yourself something to eat. You don't have to worry about, do I have money for lunch? Or, oh, crap, I forgot my lunch. Or I put my lunch in the refrigerator, but so-and-so over there ate my lunch last week accidentally, and they're probably going to do it again, so now i got to worry about whether or not my lunch is going to get eaten. Right? It's just, why? Why? You work from home, you have to worry about any of that stuff. You feed yourself, regulate your own biological functions. You can also spend more time with your children, and of course, if, if you have children. Uh, of course, research shows that spending time with children helps benefit them in their human development as they develop, right? That's if it's a healthy relationship. Children learn more from just reading your face than they could ever watching a TV show or whatever. It's like you are the most entertaining thing and um, informative thing that they have uh, when, they, when they're in their infancy, when they're in the younger stages of that human development. So we know all these things, and again, and yet we have a not a very good a progress in, in being more innovative and flexible with schedules and working remotely. And then the other thing is our relationship with the person who is managing sort of like our workload. We have a couple terms that we use for these people. We call them supervisors. We call them bosses. We call them managers. So I think that this is another one of those things that has sort of like it was had an original intent and then it morphed into something else that has really not done us a service as a human species. And but it, now what it's morphed into is these people who are just like me and you, they tell you when and when you cannot take vacation, PTO, when you can and cannot take time for sick, sick time for being sick or going to the doctor. They will tell you when you can leave or when you can't leave, when you are, when they did this and that, all these like personal sort of things. To me, it's like crossing a very personal barrier. Like, because again, we must remember that the number one principle is human beings have free will. So, whatever illusion of power they think they have, they actually don't. It's only what we allow people to do to us or tell us what to do, right? Because in reality, if I say I'm going to leave at four o'clock because I have something to do and they say, no, you can't leave at four, four o'clock. I need you to stay until five o'clock. I need you to work on that support. I need you to help over there in this area. You say, OK, bye. Bye, Felicia. And you walk away. And that's it. What, what, what can they do? They can't go they force control you like some Jedi mind trick to make you st no that's it if you say i'm done i'm done that's it if you say i'm not going to come in tomorrow until like 10 o'clock then it's okay now what they can do they can say okay you're not performing well blah 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 you're fired good then you fire. you know whatever like that but so is that the worst thing that can happen to you is that you lose a job that you didn't like to begin with that you didn't have the respect to be trusted to regulate your own schedule and your own biological needs and functions. Who cares? It doesn't matter. It's a, it's, to me, it's a joke what we have allowed to happen in our society across the world, across the globe. And around the world, though, we've got these, this power that we're giving up. 
Because again, humans have free will. Without us, there is no them. Without the employees, there is no employer, right? If you have a business and you need to hire 50 people and no one's, no one's applying for you, your business is going to fail because you can't do it by yourself. That's why you're trying to hire employees, right? But in any situation, like it doesn't matter. Like you're still probably more valuable than they they want you to think, right? But you are, right? Because every human life has value. That's another one of those principles. We all have free will, and every human life has value. In any attempt to subvert that free will, usually produces a very negative reaction violence, anger, rage, frustration, um, war. What is PTO? PTO is not really you asking permission to take time off. PTO is paid time off. It's time that you have earned and you accrued and all you're doing when you submit a PTO request is saying it's not, I don't even know why it's a, you're submitting a PTO is basically saying, hey, I'm going to use this time that I have accrued for this period of time. I'm just giving you a heads up that I'm not going to be here. Right. We've given them, the, given our supervisors and managers some like illusion of power when they can say, no, your request is denied and all we call them requests and things like that. But again, it's not really a request because if somebody denies your PTO request, that means you, that just means you're not going to get paid. But you can still go. Matter of fact, you probably will still go. You just won't get paid. And a lot of us will just bite. If you're something you really have to do, what again, what can they do? If you have to go, if you say, oh, there's a funeral, somebody passed away, or somebody's sick, or it's just something you wanted to do for a long time, and this is like the one chance you have to seek, seize an opportunity, you just do it, right? They can't stop you. You just go and do it. They may pay you. If they want to be an ass, then they might not pay you. But that wouldn't be very smart. So it's all just this really bad illusion of power that we give them, that we give managers, supervisors, this whole PTO thing, this uh, dynamic we have with managers and supervisors, performance reviews, and I mean, who, what, who, li who likes those, right? And we still, I mean, it's just disgusting. To me, it's just disgusting how we haven't evolved as a species past these sort of archaic ways and things that we do. I really just think that a lot of us are afraid of positive change or afraid of change, but in order for us to progress, we have to embrace change. That's a part of who we are as a species. Human beings evolve, we grow, we use technology, things that we are constantly trying to like fight against. Like we're trying to like be less on the computer and less about technology and let's go back to like when Things are like more natural and all that stuff, but that's never who we were as a species. We've all we've always been progressive, forward thinking, innovative, technology embracing. That's who we are as a species. And so the system that we have, it's no wonder that a lot of people are unhappy with it. That's the if you don't believe me, just look around. There's a lot of discussion about pay, about equal pay, about Work-life balance, you'll hear that a lot nowadays, right? Because there's so much research going on in the world and so much proof now that's like, okay, these 10, 12-hour days is not really healthy, right? People did it, and it actually does decrease your lifespan because you're working too much, you're tired, you fatigue, you get burnout. Moving forward, we have to make a serious change in the system. So, basically... Our lifespan, there's several things that have an effect on human life expectancy and our lifespan. One of them is what our jobs, because we've made it sort of an integral part of, of our development and our human, the human lifespan. Like what with the things that we do, we were born, we go to school, we get jobs, we retire. And uh, the relationships and the dynamic of like if you're in an unhappy situation at your job, if you're not getting enough money, if you can't pay your bills, if you can't feed your family, that's going to make a significant difference in your life, in your day-to-day -day life, and what life looks like for you in general. Like, I mean, for a lot of people, we're struggling to pay our bills. We are going without food. We don't eat. We don't, we're not getting sleep. We're suffering because we're just trying to make it from one paycheck to the next paycheck to the next paycheck. Life brings unexpected uh, things like medical bills and the other expenses. You just never know. 
So the point is, though, that we should be in a better situation globally across the board for all humans. It shouldn't be only certain people get this, but the other people, well, screw them, right? This separation has to end. This separation that we do when it comes to pay, to class, to gender, and skin shade, it has to end because it's killing us. It's tearing us apart, right? It's making us, it's not, and it's not creating a healthy competitive environment. Maybe that was the original intent, but it's not. So the human lifespan, right? Like we get to be about 120, maybe if you're lucky, that age. Um, but the human life expectancy will significantly increase the more we work on these things and one of those key things being what we do for work what we do for our for employment how we make an income if we have that sort of system anyway right we have to if we're lo looking at how we're going to shape in our future we can do anything so why not do the best that we can do leave you with that